one of these unlucky souls to decide not only the fate of their co-hosts, but of the world. I have cursed this show, and I will continue to rule. <laughs> extra, extra, you are about it. Hey guys, we've got a little bit of housekeeping that we're going to address at the end of the show. Um, it's about Patreon, it's about a bunch of stuff, so keep an eye on that at the end. Uh, we are now on whatever, uh, po wherever you find podcasts, we're on all the podcast services. But let's go ahead and get on with the show. How are you, twitch.tv slash lmjthehitman? A.K.A. Landon. L Landon? <laughs> oh, okay. Uh, what about you, Tube's own somber puppet, James? James? I have both of them. As well as this little guy. Let me go. I've got to go back to peddling news. Who the hell is that? You don't recognize your own son? I have a son? Wait, 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 wait. Quit distracting me with things that aren't important. Where are Landon and James? I will release all three of them if you can do this podcast by yourself. All three? Oh, right, right, right. My, my son. Okay. 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 I can do that. This is Extra Extra, your weekly gaming news podcast covering the news leading up to Sunday, March 6th. If you like us, you can go to patreon.com slash the briefing room. Let's get to some news. Now, this is going to be a little bit different format since uh, I don't have anyone to uh, bounce off of. Um, and there will, won't really be discussions. It's just going to be me reporting the news. Uh, so let's first talk about, uh, I played the Kirby demo, and I'm going to talk about it. The cutscenes look gorgeous. Probably the prettiest game I've seen on the Switch. When you're in-game, the quality definitely goes down a notch or two, but it's still very, very pretty game for the Switch. Um, the... Mouthful mode that they uh, announced. Very fun. Uh, in the demo, you do uh, the traffic cone, the vending machine, and the car. Uh, and they each have their um, little quirks. I'm still not entirely sure if there's a real point to the vending machine um, that you couldn't already do in your normal form. But we'll see if there's some sort of puzzle that utilizes them. Uh, it was the first three levels, and uh, it is not open world like a lot of us believed based off of the trailer. Uh, it is very much stages. Um, and uh, there's a few powers, not a whole lot of powers, that uh, you were able to use in this demo. Um, that they provided you opportunity to use. Uh, and they were a lot of your classics, like the cutter, like sword, like um, ice, um, stuff like that. There's secret objectives hidden throughout the stages. Um, the intro stage didn't really have them because it's basically your tutorial stage. Uh, the second stage, though, I got almost every task done. There is one where you had to open uh, five tulips, and I only opened up four, but I feel like I have did enough with completing the others and getting just that one missing tulip that I can safely say it's a, that's going to be the, you know, the collectible, and it's going to be a fun little thing to do, uh, especially since uh, there's Waddle Dees that 
um, are part of one of the objectives. And they provide more stuff to the town once you get to that point. I didn't get to that point in the demo. Uh, the, the boss uh, level um, was a giant gorilla. Uh, and it, its introduction was absolutely terrifying. As every Kirby fan knows, the bosses are scary. Uh, so you basically walk into a food court area and it just turns around and the windows are just big enough for you just to see its eyes and like the tip of its nose. And it just reaches in and grabs you and pulls you into the arena, uh, which was a great little introduction. There was several, I wouldn't say several, there's a couple uh, side mini bosses that were interesting as well. Um, but overall, it was a, those three stages, the two levels and then the boss stage or whatever, uh, they were, a, it took me a nice 30 to 40-ish minutes. Um, so that's really all I got for you. Uh, they did show off some more stuff you can do in the game in like a little trailer that appeared after you beat the demo. Uh... There's a mouthful mode where Kirby becomes a roller coaster. Uh, don't know what the point of that would be, but it's uh, cool nonetheless. So let's move on to the Pokemon Presents. Uh, there was a lot of stuff in there, and I ended up having to pull uh, extra stuff from uh, releases that Pokemon put out after going into a little bit more detail. Um, they announced an update for Unite. I'm not a big MOBA guy, so I, I'll just read from the press, you know, release. Uh, they're rebalancing some things. Uh, they're reworking some maps. That's part of the rebalancing. Um, there's a new playable support Pokemon, Hoopa. Um, they're making changes to quick matches. I guess there were some issues with quick matches, and they are addressing those. Uh, in Pokemon Go, um, they are releasing Generation 7 Pokemon in Pokemon Go. They're almost caught up. Uh, and they are also making some additional changes um, that some uh, in the community aren't a big fan of. They're doing extra free raid passes. Uh, they are removing the stationary incense bonus. And they're increasing the incense duration from 60 minutes to 90 minutes. Uh, in Masters EX, another game I really didn't play of Pokemon. Um, it's a, like a mobile version of the battle system. But there's, you know, obviously the standard... Uh, uh, you know, free-to-play elements in there. Um, and you're going to be able to get 10 scout tickets a day until the 16th. Um, so you still have a few more days of that. You can get up to 3,000 gems until the 27th. Uh, there is new uh, pairs you can get, which is May and Latios, Skyla and Tornadus, and Raihan and Flygon. Uh, and there's a new story plus battle mode. Uh, you can get Oak's Letter as a mystery gift until the end of March in Brilliant Diamond, Shining Pearl. Uh, and Shaman is also obtainable. Arceus, uh, Pokemon Legends Arceus, they now have massive mass outbreaks, a new battle mode, um, and those battle modes, or battle modes, I should say, not battle mode, uh, they include Path of Tenacity, where it's a series of battles with teams of three, and then uh, Path of Solitude, where you choose one Pokemon, and he, you fight another Pokemon at random, and winning that will put a mark in your Pokedex for that Pokemon. And there's also 23 additional requests and additional story. 
they announced Generation 9, which will be Scarlet and Violet. Uh, it looks to use Arceus's no Pokemon at all grass, aka, you know, you, uh, free roaming Pokemon that you can choose at will to capture or not. It looks to take place in a Spain, Italy type region. Um, the starters uh, are Sprigatito, which is a grass cat, Fue Coco, which is a fire crocodile, and the best one, Quaxley, the water duck with a pompadour, uh, which obviously that's the choice to go with. Ow! That hurts! Hey, you're not hurting James or Landon, are you? Quiet! Not only did you miss Pokemon Cafe, you keep saying, uh, uh, um all the time. You know how much your fans hate that? Okay, okay. I'm, I'm only human. I'm trying. Also, I didn't know we had fans. And I'm only a god whose patience is wearing very thin. If you didn't notice, the world lies on your shoulders. The world? <laughs> that's, uh, that's a lot of pressure. I, I, I only thought it was, uh, you know, James and Landon, not the world. <laughs> that's, that's a bigger place. All right, uh, we'll get to the next story. Uh, Elden Ring sales records. Uh, well, I guess my son's in there too, but whatever. Uh, sales data is coming from gamesindustry.biz. And it's only covering physical and UK numbers. Uh, so, um, the best uh, previous Souls game uh, was Soulsborne 3. And it's already outsold the physical sales of Souls 3 by 26%. That was uh, as of Thursday when we were supposed to record this. Things happened. Um, uh, uh, that's uh, it's got seven times the concurrent player count of the previous record. Also, uh, Soulsborne three, um, uh, and it's the third best of the year behind uh, Pokemon Legends Arceus and Horizon. I know I said the 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 things a lot. I'm sorry. Still working on it. This story I actually, <laughs> uh, this story I actually put in for Landon and James because uh, they're uh, sorry, they're big Elden Rings fans, so I was doing that for them. But they're not here to talk about it, uh, and I don't really play Souls games, so uh, you know. All right, uh, calm down, Dean. Calm down. Everything's gonna be fine. You can do this. All right, <laughs> we're back. Uh, Nvidia was hacked by a group called Elapsus, um, and possibly their deep learning super sampling source code was stolen, uh, and that is the long version of DLSS. Um, we. Sorry, didn't mean to say the thing. This is, the source code may have been stolen. It's still unclear-ish. That code is exclusively to NVIDIA RTX graphics cards. One terabyte of data claims to have been stolen. Uh, sorry, again. 75 gigabytes were released to the public. Lapsus claims to be helping the gaming and mining communities. Ugh. But so far, uh, they've only claimed to be working on a code to bypass the limits that NVIDIA has put on their graphics card for mining performance. They should just 
put a coat on to make mining just not work at all. It is what it is. There is a bit of the code that was released to the public um, that people know uh, that particular naming convention is code for the switch, and, but a little bit different. It seems to be a 2.0 version, which makes people think that it's code for a Switch Pro or a Switch 2 or something along those lines. We had another thing we were going to talk about. Ha 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 ha, we're the joke, we're the, the gaming news podcast that talks about Star Wars. Ha ha ha, there's a Lego Fallen Order that was found, you know, by a German blog, Promo Bricks. They, uh, it's 1062 as far as the piece number, and it's for BD1. Ha ha ha, we're going to run that joke into the ground. Isn't it so funny? Uh, the internet's great, isn't it? You're going to put in a joke article when the fate of the world and of Matthew is on the line? Matthew? Oh, right, right, my, my spawn. God knows I need another one of those. Listen! I put in the doc. I put all the, all the stories in the docket well before we record. In fact, like I said, we were supposed to do this Thursday, and we didn't get it done on Thursday. So what do you want from me? It was already there. Are you going to be arguing with a being that is ready to destroy the world when you could just be trying to save the world? Are you that stupid? Right. Right? Sorry? It's just I put a lot of time in those dockets, and the, the criticism of the docket, it's just... I apologize. I forgot. You're right. I should take this seriously. Keep a calm mind. Calm mind. Calm spirit. Calm body. Okay. I've got... Two more things to talk about, uh, and then we'll just we'll move on, all right? So, Activision Blizzard is blaming Microsoft for them not meeting a, a law that they were supposed to be uh, meeting. So... In 2019, in January 1st, 2019 specifically, a California law went into effect where companies had to have at least three women on the board of directors. I'm not entirely sure if, if there's a size requirement to the company for this or not. But whatever it is, Activision qualified to follow that law. Keep in mind, it's January 1st, 2019. Fast forward to November of 2021. That's when they start negotiations, true negotiations, with Microsoft. And they were supposed to have it, the three women by the end of 2021. That's a month out of almost three years. Come on, Activision. You're not fooling anybody. Your track record speaks for itself. Uh, you just, you're not doing yourselves any favors whatsoever. Now, every episode, we've gone through a list of games coming out. Uh, we've done this for a couple weeks now, and so I will go back through that entire list 
and if it's a game that's already come out, maybe see how uh, it reviewed. Um, so we'll get back to where we were, and then we'll go to September because we ended in June. So we're talking uh, Pokemon Legends Arceus came out. Viewed very well. Sold very well. It is the highest selling Pokemon game and the only one that didn't have two versions. So take that for what you will. Uh, Uncharted Legacy of Thieves Collection. People kind of knew what they were getting with that. Uh, you've got in February, you had Sifu. Reviewed very well. People were complaining about a little bit about how difficult it was, but they made no um, effort to hide the fact that it is a difficult game. Uh, Cyberpunk, the next-gen versions came out. Uh, they are what they are. Horizon Forbidden West came out. That did very well. Uh, it sold very well, reviewed very well. Uh, there were issues with uh, that I noticed people writing about the hand-to-hand -hand combat being the issue. It not necessarily feeling as free as some other open world games are. Um, but, you know, Elden Ring, the big one of the year so far, uh, it, the first weekend after it was reviewed was the highest rated game ever. I think it's dropped below that mark since, uh, but that's what everyone is still playing to this day. And it's been out for over a week, so that tells you how good that game is. Gran Turismo, that game, that game looks pretty, but uh, racing sims are fairly niche. Most people, if they're playing a racing game, are playing in more of an arcade or kart racer. Uh, so then we're getting into late March, and you have Ghostwire Tokyo and Kirby's Forgotten Land and Tiny Tina's Wonderland all coming out on the same day. Yikes. Uh, that is March 25th. Then in April, you have Lego, the Skywalker Saga. You have Chrono Cross Radical Dreamers Edition. You have Advance Wars 1 Plus 2 Reboot Camp. I've heard great things about 13 Sentinels Aegis Rim. Um, I've heard good things about it. I have not played it yet myself, but it came out on the Switch. Um, the Wii the Switch port of the Wii version of Star Wars The Force Unleashed. It is coming out. Uh, Nintendo Switch Sports is April 29th. That is when that comes out. May, you have uh, Evil Dead the Game. Gotta love Bruce Campbell there. Forspoken and Vampire the Masquerade Swang Song which I've been hearing about for quite a while now. June, you have Mario Strikers Battle League and Fire Emblem Warriors Three Hopes. Uh, oh, also Capcom Fighting Collection is in that list. Uh, we got two Switch games for July. Klonoa Fantasy Reverie Series. Uh, and Live Alive, that game I might actually pick up. Uh, in August, you have Saints Row and Soul Hackers. 
Uh, we'll see about Saints Row. I have not. I have no information about Soul Hackers, so sorry to the developers there. Uh, September Test Drive Unlimited Solar Crown and Legends of Heroes Trails from Zero. Can't can't say anything about those games because I don't know about those games. And that is all the way through September. So, <laughs> so it's a shorter episode, but uh, you you feeling generous, my dude? You feeling uh, gracious enough to let us, you know, go back to our regular, you know, uh, uh, lives? <laughs> All I wanted to do is just have fun by just torturing this tiny little podcast. But the two entertaining ones had to sleep the whole time. And I got stuck with the boring one, who's the worst? Yeah, you can have your friends and your son back. Just make sure you end the episode. I... I... I did it! Now I can tell all the ladies that I am the world's savior. <laughs> you did it, Dad! I'm so proud of you! Right. You. Just stand there quietly for a second and I'll, I'll deal with that in a minute. All right, so the housekeeping I mentioned at the end. Uh, first of all, sorry that this episode's so short. Our schedules this week just uh, didn't line up. Um, now, for obvious reasons, you know, uh, uh, God, apparently, you know, just uh, wreaking havoc on our podcast. Crazy stuff. Uh, you wouldn't see it this in any other podcast for sure. But I do have some more housekeeping stuff uh, that involves a little bit of an apology. So at patreon.com slash the briefing room, silver members get what we call the back pages and the editorials. The back pages being our post show and the editorials being our between show discussions um, that we'll sometimes have. <sighs> Full disclosure here. Uh, we usually record uh, those through Discord rather than individual audios like we do with the normal podcast. And the computer we record those Discords on had a Windows update that restarted the computer in the middle of the recording. And I say middle, it was towards the end, but whatever. All of that is just gone. It just doesn't exist whatsoever. It is the files corrupted and there's nothing that can be done about it. So for you Patreon listeners, I apologize that there is a post show and editorial you guys are missing out on. Uh, it's not fair for you guys, I know, because you are supporting the show financially. But on the positive, we are working things through. And I have a lot of that material edited now, and I'm going to be posting it on our Patreon soon, obviously outside of that episode. On a more positive note, as I mentioned before, it is official. We are on podcast services, wherever you can find them. Uh, now, I've got to find a closet or something for this guy to live in. Uh, ugh, not looking forward to spending more money on food. So I guess if you liked this podcast, or even if you didn't like this podcast, because you don't like the fact that 
uh, gods are trying to destroy the world through our podcast, which is crazy. It's a gaming news podcast. Why would they do that? Um, just make sure to do all of the things, like hitting the subscribe button, hitting the like button, hitting the bell on youtube.com slash the X of plays or you can give it a high rating on whatever podcast service you use so you can find like-minded people that either like or dislike this podcast i brought it up before but on patreon.com slash the briefing room you can financially support the show and get cool rewards as well like the back pages and the editorials when you know, Windows doesn't screw that up. That's all for us. Well, I guess for this episode, that's all for me. <laughs> uh, take care. <laughs>